Hi, welcome to class. My name is Don LaFont, Professor Don, and this week in our Cisco One class, we are covering Module 12 IPv6 addressing. This presentation is going to be just about an hour long and uh, covers very important information. Good news is IPv6 addressing is easier than IPv4 addressing, as you'll find out. We do subnetting, but it's not really the same. Basically, just decide what your subnet subnets are going to be instead of having to go through the entire subnetting process that we learned about last week. So I think you'll be pleased to see that it's not that hard. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my presentation. If you have any questions, please hold those questions to, until the end of the presentation if you're here with me live. If you are watching this as a recording inside of our Netacad classroom, please ask your questions in the help discussion forums. And if you're watching this out on YouTube, please ask questions down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those questions. All right, module 12, IPv6 addressing. Uh, we are going to learn about implementing an IPv6 addressing scheme. I'll explain the need for IPv6 addressing. I'll explain how IPv6 IPv addresses are represented. We'll compare types of IPv6 network addresses. I'll explain how to configure static, global, unicast, and link local IPv6 network addresses. And we'll explain uh, how to configure global unicast addresses dynamically. We will also configure link local addresses dynamically, identify IPv6 addresses, and implement a subnet, subnetted IPv6 addressing scheme. So we got lots to do, but it's not too complex, so let's get started. Now, the reason we need IPv6 is because there are some issues with IPv4. Uh, IPv6 has a larger 128-bit addressing space. That allows us to have 340 undecillion addresses, Remember last last week we learned that IPv4 only has uh, 4.3 I think 4.3 billion addresses and we're running out of those addresses, uh, so we needed IPv6 uh, to um, uh, because of the depletion of IPv4 because of NAT issues with IPv4 end to end encryption and the fact that we all have multiple items in our homes uh, and. Uh, at this point, we need to be able to address all of those. For example, I have in my house more than seven, 47 items, including light bulbs, my dryer, my range. I, heck, I have like seven or eight, seven or eight Alexa uh, devices as well. So um, we need to be able to address all of those individually, something we can do with, um, with IPv6. Heck, even my... Even my um, my robot vacuum, uh, I can start remotely and uh, open my garage door. Everything in my home pre pretty much is connected. No, not everything. My toaster is not yet connected to the Internet of Things, but we're working on that. The time has come to begin the transition to IPv6. Um, IPv4 and IPv6 coexist. Uh, they have been for about 20 years now, and there's no real rush. I'll tell you why in just a moment. There's no rush uh, to IPv6, uh, but it will happen naturally. Now, IPv, uh, IPv4, uh, you can either, uh, to end IPv6, they can either exist in a dual stack, tunneling, or uh, translation um, uh, um, uh, environment. So dual stack devices run both IPv4 and IPv6 protocol stacks. Uh, tunneling, a method of transporting an IPv4 packet over an IPv4 network, the IPv6 packet is encapsulated inside of IPv4 packets. And then translation network address translate, uh, translation for 64, NAT64, allows IPv6 enabled devices to communicate with IPv4 only devices using a translation technique similar to NAT in IPv4. Now note, uh, the reason why we have both of them and why we just don't jump from IPv4 to IPv6 is because of money. It's really money driven and it's businesses uh, that uh, are slowing down the transition. If you had a multi 
a million dollar network infrastructure that worked perfectly fine with IPv4. Uh, and then somebody comes along with this IPv6 uh, idea and says, you have to switch over your perfectly good running equipment and that's in IPv4 only to, to switch it over IPv6. Uh, believe me, your first response is going to be, ah, I don't need it. My equipment's working just fine. Now, ultimately, is that going to change? Yes. When IPv4 equipment starts uh, hitting end of life uh, and or breaking, uh, then at that point, uh, IPv6 only equipment uh, will uh, be implemented, uh, purchased and implemented. Um, and we'll get to that point. Now, tunneling and transition are uh, tunneling and translation are for transitioning to native IPv6 and show, should only be used when needed. The goal should be native IPv6 communication from source to destination. IPv6 address representation. Now, IPv6 addresses are 128 bits in length and are written in hexadecimal. IPv6 addresses are not case sensitive and can be written in either lowercase or uppercase. The preferred format for writing an IPv6 address is, is um, all X's with each X consisting of four hexadecimal values uh, unofficially called a hex tag. Now this is what it looks like. Uh, so this would be 0000, zero, zero, zero um, uh, X, F, X, F, E, 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 one, two, three, four, whatever, all the way down. That's how we write it. But that would be con uh, with each one going from zero to F, 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 zero, 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 one, all the way to F, 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 E, then F, 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 right? So this one F could be anything in that range. Now, this one group of four digits then breaks down to four binary, uh, four binary groups, 16 uh, digits in binary. And that's why hexadecimal is so easy to use. We learned how to convert earlier in the semester, if you remember. Now, if you look at these uh, values in front of you, these are all uh, properly formatted. Well, they're not prop, they are properly formatted IPv6 addresses. They are all, all correctly represented but you do not have to write out some of these. There are some rules as to what you can eliminate, and I will cover that over the next three, uh, the next few slides. So let me turn down the volume on my phone so I'm not interrupted with a phone call here in a moment. Now, how do we reduce these addresses to something that's much easier for you and I to remember and to work with? Well, the first rule is to omit the leading zeros. The first rule, helps reduce the notation of IPv6 address to uh, by omitting all of the leading zeros. So 01AB can just be 1AB, 09F0 can be 9F0, 0A00 can be A00. Notice it's only the leading zeros. It's exactly the same thing for you people that are comfortable with using Microsoft Excel. If you wrote 0, 1, 0, 0, 100, uh, it would automatically eliminate that leading zero. Now, you couldn't go 0, 1, 0, 0, 100 in Excel and then eliminate the, the last two zeros because then you would only have one, right? So in, in, um, in IPv6, it's the same thing. You can't just eliminate the last O uh, because uh, that uh, zero that because then you would just have nine F and you wouldn't know is it nine F zero nine F zero 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 nine F zero you wouldn't have any zero zero nine F so you can only get rid of the leading zeros uh, here they give you an example uh, so this IPv6 address of 2001 zero DB uh, eight is reduced to DB eight uh, zero 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 is reduced to zero and then you can see uh, us moving all along. Now, now we're not done with this yet. We can. Here's another example uh, with um, uh, no leading zeros uh, here. Now, notice here you cannot get rid of trailing zeros. The trailing zeros must remain uh, because, just like they did here, uh, because 
again, you can't eliminate. There would be no way to know. Here we have a leading zeros all the way down. Notice we have to keep at least one of those zeros, right? This is, if you couldn't eliminate all four, that wouldn't work at all. Uh, so uh, we have zero, zero all the way down. Now, that's not exactly true. You can eliminate groups of four zeros. That is our second rule. Now, the, the second rule means is this. A double colon, 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 can replace any single contiguous string of one or more 16-bit hextets consisting of all zeros. So in this case, uh, 2001 zero DBA is reduced to DBA. All zeros is reduced to zero ones. And then look, these three sets of zeros are all reduced to colon colon. Now notice you cannot eliminate uh, two groups of zeros. So here we have a group here and a group here. Now you have to just pick. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. They will both end up representing the same number. Uh, you could do 2001 DBA colon colon ABCD 0, 0, 100, or you could do 2001 DBA 0, 0, ABCD colon colon 100. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can do it either way. They're both correct. Here's another example, uh, omitting all zero segments. In this case, they're all zeros except for a one. So this is one set. So we get FFO2, then one set, one, one colon, colon, and then the number one. Here, we have all zeros, and so we just have colon, colon. Basically, when you see colon, colon in IPv6, that in means that you have all zeros. Colon, colon means you have all zeros. IPv6 address types. Now, there are several different types of addresses, just like there were uh, in IPv4. Now, uh, actually, IPv6 has a couple extra uh, types that we'll learn about in the next few slides. So there are three broad categories of IPv6 addresses. Unicast, just like there was in IPv4, it's coming from one place and going to another place. Then the here we're leaving, uh, uh, IP uh, one network IP IPv10. Hang on just a second. Yeah. Here we're going from uh, the one network uh, one dot ten one colon colon ten uh, going to one colon colon eight. So uh, unicast one to one. And um, by the way, uh, just to go, let's see if I can go backwards on this. Um, the IPv6 does not have a broadcast address. However, there is an IPv6 all nodes multicast address that essentially gives you the same results. Now, the reason why we say you don't have a broadcast address is because we, ha we have um, multicast addresses that include, for example, all routers or all nodes, which includes all routers and all nodes. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So anyways, unicast I just showed you. And then multicast goes to one to more than one. And then uh, then they talk about any cast uh, is uh, to uh, specific any cast addresses. Uh, like I said, all nodes. We'll learn, we, we touched on that before the end of this presentation. Now the IPv6 prefix length in slash, no, slash notation is used to indicate the network portion of an IPv6 address. The previous the prefix length can range from zero to 128. The recommended IPv6 address length for most LANs is slash 64. That has to do with the way uh, that computers uh, create uh, their or uh, hosts create their own IPv6 address in uh, the IPv6 uh, address space. And uh, we have already, uh, no, I don't think we talked about that yet. Uh, we talked about that later, but it has to do with Slack, and that, that's an, that's really a Cisco two thing. But let's just tell, I'll just tell you that hosts can create their own IPv6 address. They don't have to be assigned. It's not the same thing as uh, uh, IPv4 having a pool of addresses in DHCP. It's um, it's a little bit different than that. 
uh, in Slack, basically they're given uh, the prefix information, the network information, and then they create their own address. Well, that only works with uh, slash 64 networks. So the most likely you are going to always have a, a, a slash 64 prefix uh, when we're talking about IPv6 addresses. So this, these three hex tets, 2001 DB8, uh, 0 db 0 a these three hex sets uh, are, is the network portion. This is the subnet. I'll show you that in a minute. And then these are all of the addressable host addresses in a slash 64. And that's where it gives you um, 60, what did I say earlier? 64 trillion, no, 18 quintillion addresses. Uh, this gives you 18 quintillion addresses. We come back to that in just a minute. All right, so that works. Uh, now, when we talk about addresses, there are several types of addresses. So there is a global unicast address, a GUA. These are globally unique uh, internet routable addresses. My light bulbs, my Hue light bulbs in my house have that uh, GUA address, IPv6 address, printed right on the light bulb. If that light bulb dies, or when it dies, I should say, that address will never again be used in the world because it's already been assigned. Now, the, those are unique, so that's why when I'm at, uh, when I'm away from my home, if I forget to turn off the lights in my house, I can just go on my phone and I can turn off all the lights in my house. Uh, so that's why we want a global unicast addressing. Now, there's also link local addresses for every uh, IPv6 enabled device, uh, and they are used to communicate with other devices on the same local network, the local link. LLAs are not routable and are configured to uh, confined to a single link, a, a single network. So when we're talking about these link local addresses, we'll see them in a little bit, uh, those link local addresses, think about those as the way IPv6 communicates within a local network. Uh, think about, I think I might have mentioned it earlier, uh, the way Windows assigns a local uh, address uh, that is not addressable to the world if you don't have a network uh, connected. Uh, th this is the same thing. Uh, those addresses allow IPv6 devices to communicate without going to the router, without going out to the network. In fact, they can't go out to the network. We have a loopback address, that's colon colon one, or colon colon two, colon colon three. Uh, those addresses uh, are loopback addresses. Uh, then we, the, when we have an unspecified address, that's colon colon 128. When it doesn't have an address, it's colon colon 128. So when a device comes online, an IPv6 comes online, and, and it has no address, it sends out a, um, a router solicitation, an RS message, and it says, hey, I need an address. And then the router replies with the router advertisement message saying, hey, and then I won't get into detail what that router advertisement uh, gives it, but it knows uh, that you need an address because you are you have a colon colon 128. That means you don't have an address. Um, there are also uh, unique local addresses, and then there's that embedded in IPv6 address that we don't really uh, talk about in this course. Just know it exists. It's taking an IPv6 address and putting it in an IPv4 format and uh, multiple IPv4 formats and transferring it on the other end, it gets put back together again. Now, uh, link local address. Uh, now we go into depth a little bit on some of those. An IPv6 link local address enables a device to communicate with other IPv6 enabled devices on the same link and only on that link, a link being a subnet or network. Packets with the source or destination link local address cannot be routed past the router. Every IPv6 enabled network interface must have a link local address because that's how they communicate within the network. If the local link address is not configured manually on the interface, the device will just create its own. Uh, IPv6 local link addresses are in the range FF80 colon colon 10. So you'll always see FF, 
at 80 colon colon one colon colon two, unless you go in and give it a specific, actually, it'll be a really long address if it does it on its own. Uh, but often in training, we just see it as FE80 colon colon one. Uh, but if it uses, uh, if it creates its own link, uh, address, it'll be a random number and it won't, it won't make any sense because it's just a random number. Now, typically it is a local link address of the router that is used as the def default gateway. So here is the default gateway of this router. Uh, it, oh, here's the default gateway of this uh, router here. This would be, uh, the default gateway for this host to reach outside the world. Uh, a couple notes about unique local addresses. The IPv6 unique local address in the range FC00 colon slash seven to FDFF colon colon slash seven have some similarity to RF, RFC 1918 private addresses for IPv4, but there are significant differences. Unique local addresses are used for local addressing within a site or between a limited number of sites. Unique local addresses can be used for devices that will never need to access another network. Unique local addresses are not translated to global ad IPv6 addresses like they are in IPv4. All those local addresses in the 192.168 uh, network or 10, uh, uh, the 10 network, are, all of those addresses are just, they are translated by NAT by the router into a global uh, address in IPv4 that is then routed and then the translations re uh, reversed on the way back. That's not the true with IPv6. They are not translated to global addresses. And like link IPv4 uh, private addressing, unique local addresses are not globally routed. You cannot pa pass these addresses on uh, past the router. Now, many sites use private nature, the private nature of RFC 1918 IPv4 addresses to attempt to secure or hide the network from potential security risks. It's not the intention and never has been of the um, ULAs. Now, IPv6 global unicast addresses, GUAs, are global, unique, and routable on the IPv6 internet. Currently, only GUAs with the first three bits of 001 or 2000 uh, colon colon slash three are being assigned. So you see colon colon in the range colon colon one. Um, that, uh, that, uh, that, those two bits, uh, 001 or 2000, uh, those two um representations uh the first three bits um uh get, is only one eighth of the total available ipv6 address space that's why you often see the address uh in uh, 001 or 200 and then off we go now the structure of an ipv6 global unicast address um, I already mentioned this briefly a moment ago. So uh, the the address has three parts. It has the routing prefix. That is the first, um, um, the network portion of the address that is assigned by the provider. That's this portion right here. Uh, the prefix is four hex tets, but this uh, the th the first three are the network slash. That's why slash, it says slash forty eight. But these three uh, is uh, the uh, the network portion of the address. Now the subnet ID is the next one, the next hextet. Uh, here they give you two example, two examples of the subnet uh, field. That's this group right here, uh, and and then this is the actual um, IP addresses that are assignable. Uh, when we have a slash 64, and it's all of these 18 quintillion addresses. Um, and uh, and here they give you an example of 10, and that is representing, remember you can get rid of all of the pre the leading zeros. So it's uh, it ends up being, uh, uh, that becomes a colon colon for all of these zeros. And then, oops, and then the last part is colon colon 10. So you just see the 10 part. Now, I mentioned 
uh, there's a lot of subnets. It's 65,000 subnets, each with 18 quintillion addresses. That's what a 60 slash 64. So you're not going to run out of subnets and you're definitely not gonna run out of addresses by using a prefix uh, of um, 64. Now, uh, 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 the global routing prefix, the global routing prefix uh, is the prefix or network portion of the address that is assigned by the provider, such as an ISP to a customer or site. The global routing prefix will vary depending on the ISP, ISP property uh, policies. Now, subnet, a subnet ID field is the area between the global routing prefix and the interface ID. The subnet ID is used by an organization to identify subnets within its site. The interface ID, that's the IPv6 interface ID equivalent to the host portion in IPv4 address, 10 on my last example. That is the interface ID. This, this is the interface ID, which represents this because we just eliminated all the zeros and put colon, colon. All right, IPv6 allows the all zeros and all ones host addresses can be assigned to a device. Um, the all zeros address is reserved as a, sub, a subnet router anycast address and should be assigned only to routers. We'll come back to that later. Global unicast address and local link address static configuration. So you can, uh, you can configure a uh, IPv6 address, uh, a global unicast IPv6 address uh, with the command uh, at, uh, IPv6 address, and then whatever the address is, slash whatever the prefix is, 64, for example. And then remember, you have to turn on uh, IPv6 unicast routing, otherwise it's not gonna work. So here is the commands itself. So what we are, we are on R1, we're on R1, and we're gonna go to G000, G00, uh, G00 and we are going to uh, enter an IPv6 address, uh, 2001 colon db8 colon uh, acad colon one. This is the network portion, the one network. Then the two network goes over here. See the two network. And then the three network goes over here. This is the three network. And they all have, they all use the very first address out of the 18 quintillion numbers, a uh, host addressing that can be assigned. And then they all have the prefix of 64. So that's how we manually assign an address uh, to a router port uh, leading to a network. Okay, really easy. Now, the uh, static configuration of global unicast address, uh, the router configuration, uh, here I just have it broken down. Uh, so uh, that was for, um, uh, that was extra. I don't know why I have this. Um, this is already on the previous slide, I think. Let me see. Wonder why I have that twice. Colon, colon, one. Colon, colon, one. Oh, uh, the only difference between this one, uh, G00, uh, and this one is it's also showing you what it would look like if you had a G000 uh, interface a gigabit. Uh, some routers have three numbers, 0000. zero, zero. Uh, and some uh, have two, and this just shows you that it's the same. Now, you can also manually configure a global unicast uh, address on a host device, just like you did in IPv4, just by going to the network property page and uh, just entering in, uh, use the following address, put in the, uh, the manual address that you've been, you've been told to assign, and then the prefix, and then the default gateway. Without the default gateway, your, your network isn't going to work because nothing can communicate past the router. Now, you can also assign a local link address manually. Uh, it would uh, be configured using the same IPv6 address, um, but then you, give, then you give it an IPv6 link local address. Uh, well, you give it whatever that address is, uh, it's just another address in that range. And then you type the word link local. Uh, and here's the example. Um, 
interface, you go to the interface, G000, uh, then IPv6 address. Here is the, the proper uh, address for the first interface in that FE80 range. And then you type the word link local, and that assigns it as a link local. And then, of course, no shutdown. Same thing over here. Don't forget to no shutdown to bring it, bring up those addresses, right? I forgot to mention that earlier, but you should know that at this point. And here it actually is. We got that. Okay, good. Now, dynamic addresses for IPv6 uh, global unicast addresses. Now, devices obtain global unicast addressing dynamically through the Inter-Control Message Protocol, ICMP v6 uh, messaging protocol. Router solicitation messages are sent by the host device to discover an IPv6 router. Router advertisement messages are returned by the router to inform the host on how to obtain an IPv6 global unicast address and provide useful network information such as the network prefix and prefix length, the default gateway, DNS address, and domain, domain, and domain name. The router advertisement can provide three methods for configuring IPv6 global unicast address. When I remember I told you they can create their own addresses. Uh, we don't get too far into it, but the three methods are Slack, uh, Slack uh, with D, uh, stateless DHCPv6. This is where it creates uh, its own IP address, but then it go, reaches out for the other information, such as the DNS address. And then there's stateful, uh, which has no slack. It, uh, stateful uh, actually assigns IPv6 address and the, the host does not create its own address. By the way, uh, stateful addressing means that in stateful DHCPv6, the, there is a server that's keeping track of the IPv6 addresses that are, that are handed out from a pool of IPv6 addresses. Uh, those addresses are um, are maintained and then released at a specific time, although IPv6 addresses can be infinite. There's 18 quintillion addresses in a slash 64, so why not? Slack and Slack with stateless DHCP, these two methods uh, do not, um, do nobody keeps track of the address. It uses something called DAD, duplicate address detection, where it will uh, once it configures its own address, it sends it out to the world and it says, hey, basically it's saying, hey, are you out, any, am I out there, right? By sending uh, a, um, uh, a, um, uh, a unicast message to its own address. And if nobody responds, then it's good to go. If somebody responds, then there's a problem. Uh, and here they actually go through it. Uh, so Slack allows the device with a global unicast address to configure its own glo global unicast address without the services of DHCP v6 uh, server. Devices obtain the necessary information to configure the global unicast address for the, from the ICMP v6 router advertisement message of the local router. The prefix is provided by the router advertisement and the device uses either the EUI64 or random generation method to create the interface ID. Windows and many networks use the random method in today's world uh, because of security issues with uh, the EUI64 method. Uh, I don't think they go into depth uh, about that. The, the EUI64 um, method takes the MAC address of the host, breaks it in half, throws FFFE in the middle of it, and that creates a unique address. Problem with that, of course, is when you send it to go out to the world, it's unique, it's a globally unicast address, go out to the world, and anybody that says, sees FFFE in the middle of an address knows that how to, uh, your MAC address, because they just take the FFFE out of your MAC address, and now they have your I'm, I'm sorry, out of the the um, the, uh, the IPv6 address, the last um, uh, half of the address, uh, they just remove the FFFE uh, and that, and then they squish it back together and now you're back to the 48-bit um, uh, MAC address. So anyway, that's why it's a security issue. Now, the second way we do this, uh, is Slack and stateless DHCP. Now it's stateless because it, just because this information is coming from the DHCP server does not mean that anybody is keeping track of the address. 
uh, is just getting some network information. The router advertisement can instruct a device to use both. The router advertisement message suggests devices use the following. Slack to create its own IPv6 global unicast address. And then the router local link address, which is the router advertisement source IPv6 address as the default gateway address and the stateless DHCP v6 server to obtain other information such as the D DNS server and the address. So what that looks like, uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, so what that looks like is uh, the host reaches out uh, to a server, I mean to a router with an RS router solicitation message saying, hey, I need an address. The, the router responds with a message that says here, we want you to use, here is your network that you're on, we want you to create your own address. Uh, and, but you need to reach out to the DHCP server uh, to get the rest of the information. So then the host, once it, cre uh, once it creates its address, it reaches out to the DHCP server and it says, hey, I, what else do you got for me? And it sends things like the, the um, uh, DNS server and the domain name. Now, the last way uh, is the stateful DHCP v6 uh, method. Now, router advertisement can and instruct the device to use stateful, meaning that somebody's keeping track of addresses, DHCP v6 only. Now that means uh, it's going to, in the router advertisement, your, your host is going to reach out and say, hey, I need an address. And the router is going to say, can't help you, buddy. You got to go see the DHCP v6, the state, I mean, the state full. This is incorrect. I got to fix that. Hang on a second. <laughs> So much for quality control at um, Cisco uh, and Netacad. It's a stateful server, uh, not a stateless. We're talking about stateful up here. Uh, so again, the router reaches out with a, a router solicitation, says I need an address. Uh, the router advertisement message says, nope, no address for you. You got to reach out to the DHCP v6 uh, server and get an address from them. And then a handshake happens uh, where the DHCP v6 server, the stateful server, you know, offers an address and then the uh, the, P, the host uh, accepts the offer and then acknowledges it and then the server uh, acknowledges the acknowledgement and then that's when the duplicate, uh, that's where there's no duplicate address detection necessary in this because uh, it was handed the address so there's no need to do that. Um, it may still be notifying other servers. This is my address, though. So anyway, so that is how stateful. And remember, this stateful server uh, will actually retain that address uh, um, uh, and keep track of it and uh, give it a time limit. And it, it dies after a while or its lifetime, one or the other. All right. Keep going. Uh, now, the oh, they show you the uh, EUI64 process. I guess I should have looked ahead. Uh, so I already told you this, how this works. So if the router uh, responds with make your own address, uh, then, the, uh, then the host can make it in one of two ways. Uh, it will either use the EUI64 process or just randomly generate a new address. Now the EU the EUI64 process takes a um, your MAC address uh, and it flips the second bit uh, and it adds it flips the second bit and it adds FFFE in the middle. Uh, the flipping the second bit has no purpose for the seventh. I'm sorry, the seventh bit. The seventh bit has no purpose. I spent some time doing some research. It may have back in the day, uh, but there's no reason for it now. So it flips the seventh bit and it puts FFFE in the middle. So if you were just to flip the seventh bit back from one to a zero, zero to one, whatever, uh, then the uh, it would flip it back. You would then be back at the MAC address. If you know the rules, you would flip back the, the seventh bit and you would remove FFFE and then you have the MAC address of the device, which could be a security issue. Anyway, so this is the EUI64 process. If you see uh, FFFE in the middle of a, a, um, uh, a um, IPv6 address, the last 64 bits, you know it used the EUI method uh, to get to that address. Uh, and here, uh, on the other hand, see this number here, 
Uh, this is just a random number uh, because you can look at it. Here's the here's the network address. This is in network one. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the network address. This is subnet one and the one network. And this is actually all of the network, right? But we only subnet in this um, uh, uh, hex tech. And then this is a random number. Notice there's no FFE in the middle. So this is just a random method uh, and it makes it completely uni uh, um, unique. Uh, and then it needs the duplicate address detection. Uh, and uh, that is similar to ARP. Uh, but anyways, uh, duplicate address basically sends out a unicast to itself. And if it, if it gets a reply, it just, it just randomly gives itself another number. 16 quintillion, 18 quintillion, 16 quintillion. Now, the next thing we talk about is dynamic addressing for local link addresses. So all IPv6 interface must have an IPv6 local link address. The local, like IPv6 global unicast address, local link addresses must be configured or can be configured dynamically. The figure shows the local link address is dynamically created using the FE80 colon colon uh, prefix slash 10 prefix and the interface ID using the EUI 64 process or again the randomly generated number. So again we're dealing with just the, the last 64 bits uh, and uh, the, the first um, the, the, fir the, the first prefix is FE80 and then all zeros uh, so it's one 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 uh, zero one zero all zeros and then the rest of all zeros, and then the, the network address, when I say it's colon one, it could be colon, colon, colon one, colon, colon two, colon, colon three, et cetera. So here we have, notice this address is, uh, this is, a, this is uh, an example of a global unicast address with FFFE in the middle of it. And uh, that address was created using uh, the uh, EUI 64 method. And down here is a random, notice no FFFE in the middle. So this is a random method. Now here we have uh, FFFE in the middle of our FE80 address, right? This would be the Mac. Notice it's the same numbers, right? These are the same numbers because it's the same device, the same Mac. Down here, uh, it has, uh, it does not have uh, FFFE in the middle. So it is a unique number for that local link address. Cisco routers automatically create IPv6 local link addresses whenever a global unicast address is assigned to the interface. By default, Cisco IOS routers use the EUI64 to generate the interface ID for all local link addresses on an IPv6 interface. That's by default on a router, it uses the, the EUI64. Here is an example of a local link address dynamically configured on the G00 address. So here um, we have uh, the FE80 addresses down here on G000. Uh, this would be the first part of the, the MAC address. This would be the last part. This would be FFE -E, -F 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 -E in the middle. And then remember, you got to flip that seventh bit. Now, Cisco's routers automatically create an IPv6 LLA uh, local link address whenever a, a global unicast address is assigned to the interface. By default, Cisco IOS routers, wait, this looks like the same slide. Oh, verify it. <laughs> to verify it, um, I just had to fix this um, command. These two slides were you were uh, actually pretty much the words were the same, but here they were showing you uh, the show commands to see uh, the information to see that local link address. Uh, and um, here is uh, FFF uh, FE80 uh, indicating it's a local address, uh, and then the MAC address FFE. FFFE in the middle tells you that it was the EUI64 method and then the rest of the MAC address. All right. Uh, you're going to do a packet tracer on IPv6 addressing. 
And um, then they go in and they show some more configuration. Uh, I mean, some sure, some more um, verify com uh, uh, commands are going to be very similar to IPv4, except remember always put the v6 uh, here. So just like you could do show IP interface brief, you can do show IPv6 interface brief. Gives you a brief look at each of the interfaces and whether or not it's up or not. You can do a show IPv6 route to open up the IPv6 routing table. These are the networks. These are the, lo the local uh, addresses uh, that are assigned. We've talked about that. And then you can ping an address to see that if it's uh, if it's a um, if it is reachable. Just remember, uh, you don't actually need to put in the IPv6 in there. You just do ping, and then you just type in the IPv6 address. Now, we'll talk now about IPv6 multicast addresses. So, IPv6 multicast addresses have the prefix FF00 and then colon colon with the slash 8 prefix. There are two types of IPv6 multicast addresses. There are well-known multicast addresses and then there are solicited node multicast addresses. Multicast addresses can only be, can only be desktop destination addresses and not source addresses. So um, an example of a well-known IPv6 multicast address uh, is the, um, the all nodes multicast group, and that is FFO2 colon colon one. That's basically everything. Uh, it's a multicast group that all IPv6 enabled devices join, including routers and hosts. A packet sent to this group is received and processed by all IPv6 interfaces on the link or network. There's also FFO2 colon colon two. There's others, but these are the two they introduce you to in Cisco One. Uh, and this um, multicast group is all routers. So when you uh, go to a message, for example, the router solicitation uh, is sent to the FFO2 colon colon two, uh, all, um, multicast all uh, all routers multicast address saying hey i need an address and then one or more respond now don't forget you always have to put in that ipv6 unicast routing command otherwise it's not going to work now the all nodes um a solicited node multicast address is similar to the all nodes multicast uh multicast address uh, so a solicited node multicast address is mapped to a special ethernet multicast address the Ethernet NIC can filter the frame by examining the destination MAC address without sending it to the IPv6 process to see if the device is intended target of the IPv6. So here, um, the destination MAC and it's a solicited node multicast and it is sent and then it, and then the individual devices say, oh, nope, not for me, nope, not for me, hey, that's for me. And uh, even though all devices receive it, uh, only those nodes uh, that it was intended to will receive that address. Uh, you're also going to do a lab on IPv6 addresses. Now, this is, um, uh, remember, this is not a, um, this is a paperwork lab. It's not in Packet Tracer or we're not going to use it with real equipment. But you need to know how to use IPv6 address. In this case, you're going to do some abbreviation and break up the addresses into different pieces. Now, the next thing uh, we talk about is subnetting. Remember, don't be, don't cringe. I see some of you cringing out there already. Don't cringe. This is an IPv4 subnetting. Subnetting in IPv6 is super easy. In IPv6, you just take that the fourth hextet, the not quite the middle 16 bits, the the four, the hextet before the interface ID. And then you just decide what you want it to be, and then you just put it in there. It could be one, two, three, four. It could be ten, twenty, thirty, forty. It can be that doesn't make any sense, but it could be. It could be uh, A B C D. It could be A A A A B B B B C C C C. You decide, right? Uh, it's yours. Uh, that hex set gives you sixty-five thousand uh, possible subnets, uh, ranging all the way from zero, 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 zero. Uh, and then 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to FFFF, right? That one hex stack gives us 65,536 
subnet. And you decide how you want to break that down, break it up. Doesn't matter. It could be just one, two, three, four, right? Well, it's one, two. This is the three network, and that's the four network. Just that easy, right? It could be, it could be A, B, C, D, E. That's just fine. You just gotta figure out what what do you do when you run out of letters? Then it becomes what A A, A, B, A, C, uh, and then B B. I mean B A, B, 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 C. You gotta decide what you do once you get past the 26 letters uh, in the alphabet. So anyway, so uh, you decide what you want it to be. It could be one, 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 one. The next one's two, 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 three, 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 three. That's not very smart because you're gonna run out at nine, 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 right? But I'm just saying, you decide, it's up to you. In this case, they just decided to skip the first um, subnet and they started with one, one, one. They started with the one network. They didn't start with the zero network. They could have started with the zero network and this would have been zero, but then it would have been ACAD colon colon slash 64. And that might have been confusing to people. They would have seen 48 bits colon colon one, and they were like, what is this? But in reality, that's just the zero network, right? Remember, you can eliminate all the zeros uh, that are next to each other. So um, and here we're just eliminating uh, this, uh, the, the, all of the, 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 uh, the, the link, I'm sorry, the host portion, uh, colon, colon, uh, we would just add one more zero to that. I, that, I think that was a trick question I got once on an exam. That's why I, um, I bring it up now is I, there was a, there was a question that says, uh, what would be the next neck? What would be the next network? And it provided, uh, DB, uh, it's 2001 DBA ACAD colon colon 64. And I was like, I don't know. You didn't give me a network. Well, they did give you a network, the zero network. That is zero. It's all zeros. All right. That's, I'm killing a dead horse. Or what is that? I'm, uh, kicking a dead horse. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, uh, once you have your network, then you just assign it. Notice here on our router one. We are assigning the first address in the one network on the on 000, 000, 001 gets the first address on the two network. And in 010, we get the first address in the three network. Then make sure you type no shutdown for each one of those addresses and you have configured your address. You're gonna do a packet tracer on this, implement a subnetted IPv6 address scheme. You're going to do a lab, configure IPv6 addresses on a network. And that is that uh, for this, this this week's lessons. Um, hopefully that's been uh, interesting uh, to you. Let me stop sharing so you can come back to me. Again, subnetting IPv6, super easy. Uh, there are several different types of IPv6 addresses, but the majority of the ones you're going to use uh, are the GUAs, the LLAs, uh, the, um, and then uh, your, your loopback addresses. Uh, you won't see any of the other ones uh, in this course or in Cisco 2, uh, maybe future courses, but uh, those are unique uh, addresses that are beyond the scope of this class. So if you, as long as you know how to use a GUA and an LLA and the fact that there's two different ways of configuring it uh, with the EUI64 method or uh, by adding FFFE in the middle and flipping the seventh bit, uh, and then the other method, which is completely unique. Uh, that wraps up this presentation. Not very hard, uh, not very hard at all. Um, my name is Don LaFont, Professor Don, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, I want you to ask those questions inside of the help discussion form, and I will uh, be happy to help you if you're, uh, if you're in on my Netacad class. If you're here with me live, you can ask them in just a moment. And if you're watching uh, on YouTube, please like and subscribe uh, to this video uh, so you can get my future videos as well. I also would appreciate, uh, and you can also ask questions that, on, that, um, on that website uh, down below and I'll do my best to answer it. But please help, help each other out. That's the best way uh, to learn is to by helping out somebody else. All right, great. This has uh, been uh, uh, 
uh, module 11, no, module 12, I believe, um, IPv6 addressing and uh, enjoy learning more about uh, IPv6. And I will, uh, I will see you next week.